Hmm. So I was sitting here contemplating a channeling. It's a nice, quiet beginning to the morning and just having my coffee and I could feel a woman's energy as far as who should I channel. There's a few people I would like to channel for myself today and let you watch. And this person I didn't expect. And it's somebody we haven't met before on Above Life Channel. So let's have a conversation with Doris Day. Come on in, Miss Sunshine. She feels very joyful, just perky, happy sun like a ray of sunshine so i didn't do my traditional introduction so let me do that hi it's bridget welcome to above life channel the purpose here as always is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today we're going to have an afterlife conversation with doris day that was cool how that kind of happened i like that that was kind of cool okay so why are you the celebrity that i'm connecting with today she says, I'm known as the, my reputation from my human experience, from my lifetime, she says, is that of a girl next door. And my most proudest accomplishment is my children, my family. I can see dogs around you, lots of dogs around her. Yes, animal lover, yes, Miss Doris Day, yes, animal lover, she says, yes. And I can see an image of your house, one of your homes in Hollywood. It looks like, I think I've seen, I'm trying to think if my brain can recall. I may have a memory, an actual human memory of seeing a video or a vlog of your one of your homes in Hollywood, I think. Maybe like one of those Hollywood home tour kind of vibe things like that. She says, it's, it's possible, it's possible. Um, She's showing me friends, and then she says somebody Martin. I don't know if it's Dean Martin. Is somebody Martin, Dean Martin, or Martin. And then she says somebody named Steve, or Stephen. And then she shows me being in love with someone that didn't, couldn't reciprocate or couldn't love her back the way she needed to be loved, and not having hard feelings about that almost being it feels like like you guys are going to just throw things at the screen go ahead and do that yell at me if you want but i don't know a lot about doris day i do know that she's like blonde <laughs> i guess i think in my brain that's how you look right now and that she's very sunny and very um uh, sweet and genuine she feels really genuine like she honestly feels like a nice kind person like somebody that you could um, reach out to and ask for uh, as a friend a good friend somebody that could would support you and be by your side and listen she feels like a good listener um, I do feel like she had a little bout of um, there's an energy of depression by her so I don't know if the depression was a temporary thing that she actually had a little bit of a depression but she couldn't say that because she's showing me that she the public persona had to be very perky perky is the word perky and perfect, perfect. A lot of um, um, intense um, pressure on her to be perfect. And, and like she's showing me the way she stands and how much weight she gains is a really big deal. And like the size of her waist had to be really small. And like, just to like, it's just really, there's a lot of, like she shows me very uptight and very tense at the core of the body. Like everything's sucked in and really tight and um, her posture and having to be a certain way. Um, she also shows me like, I see a movie like a, I don't know if this is a movie, you guys, because I'm clairvoyant, so I see stuff, imagery, and I don't always understand what it means, so you can fill in the blanks, all right? But I see she's showing me kind of like a, like a 1950s scene. I don't know if it's a movie or if it's actually her life in the 50s um, with like cars parked, kind of like, um, I want to say like a scene from Happy Days. <laughs> because that's the only thing I can think of in my brain or a scene from the movie Grease, that kind of vibe. Um, I see that and like poodle, poodle skirts and that kind of vibe, I see that. Um, does she dance? This is gonna sound so stupid, but did she dance and sing? Because I feel like she's multi-talented. It feels like that. She says, oh, 
She's like, oh yes, I just, she's like, oh, just about everything. She says, I could spit on my head if you need me to, that kind of a thing. Like they, she says they really push you or pressure you in Hollywood to be very, um, in the time that she was an actress, she's saying, um, an entertainer is what she's saying. She says there's really a lot of pressure to be able to do all, the, all of the things, all of these things. I'm getting this feeling of like a young, like beauty queen or something, like really pretty. Like, I don't know if she got discovered super young, like 16 or something, like a, a beauty queen or at a state fair or something, or a little like a, you know, this high school picture or something, but she's just so like pure and wholesome and just perfect. I'm also feeling like she maybe had an affair with a married man, or she was in love with someone who was married to somebody else or ended up marrying somebody else, almost like a Liz Taylor kind of vibe, like, um, or I see, uh, uh, Carrie Fisher, her mom married to somebody, Eddie Fisher, like kind of a scenario like that. Do you know how, um, so her mom, so, okay, this is going to be weird. Stay with me. All right. So kind of, they're trying to show me they're dealing with what they got, which is me trying to figure this out. So it feels like how Carrie Fisher was the child of Eddie Fisher. And so her mom was in love with him, but he was also in love with, I think Elizabeth Taylor is what it was. So almost like a triangle kind of a little bit kind of a thing. Like I'm feeling like Doris had some of that going on, but not like scandalous. Like for her, it almost feels like she had a baby and then he wasn't available or able to be part of their lives or something. Like I feel like she had two kids. Is there two or three? I can't quite tell. There might be two with one person and one with another maybe, but when she had children, it's like that's her whole life, like just loved her kids. That's what she's showing me, her devotion to her children. But then I also see a military vibe. So the man that she was in love with might have been in the military or the father of her children. And I think it might be two different people, the one that she's really in love with versus the father of her ch children. Does this make sense? You guys, I know, like I say, I have to apologize, Doris, to Above Life Channel because I, she has to work with what I have as far as reference and understanding. And so I understand that if you're a diehard Doris Day fan, that you're gonna be mad about this one, but I'm doing the best I can. I just wanna get to know her. All right, so Doris, so tell us about, in reflection, looking back upon your human life, upon life in general, all right, life in general, in reflection, from an afterlife perspective, what piece of advice would you give? Oh, she says, oh, many. She said, many. She says, oh gosh, you guys, this is beautiful. She says, forgive yourself fast. Forgiveness is the key to your peace. She said, forgive yourself fast. Like quickly, like don't harbor self-blame, self-guilt, self-doubt, that kind of thing. She's like, forgive yourself fast, quickly. Forgive yourself quickly, she says. Um, and then she says, oh, this is interesting. She says to me that she, it was easier for her to be tender and kind to others and to give them the benefit of forgiveness to to recognize that other people can make, mis make mistakes and, and to be forgiving of others, but much, much, much more difficult to be forgiving of herself. So that's just, that's a great piece of advice. What have you learned about the afterlife? Like what, maybe what surprised you when you transitioned into the afterlife as a, now that you're an afterlife spirit, what, what surprises you about the afterlife? how easy she says how easy it is to be she says how easy okay so she's she's trying to say it but i'm feeling i feel the energy more than i it, it, words can't describe ease she's saying like ease not easy as in oh it's hard it's it's if there's no kind of like ego mind challenges, physical body challenges, there's none of those kind of challenges that we're used to is kind of the vibe I'm getting from her. But it's ease, it's, it's this sense of, you feel, she says, you feel when you're dying or when you're aging and you're contemplating your own mortality, your own death. She says, um, it feels like 
And she says, I had, I had quite a bit of time to do that. <laughs> she says, she must have lived a long life because she's like, I had quite a bit of time to do that. She says, it, it feels now, there's so much of an, an instant understanding of how hard we really are as people on ourselves. We really make life hard, she says. We really make human people really make life difficult on themselves. There's so much inner, like torture, she says, like inner, just mm, picking away at yourself and da -da 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 -da. and and she says there's so much that we we pick up so much garbage that influences who who we are who who we know what we know of ourselves the goodness she says what we know of ourselves the good as a person and she says with this afterlife now understanding, looking through this, it, I want to say lens, but she says through this, like the sun energy, this positive, glowing, supportive energy of, not support, uh, positive, it's like just hopeful, just really uplifting energy. She says, the sad part is, the saddest part, Bridget, she says the saddest part is that you don't really know that. You don't really understand. You, 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 you don't know, you can't even begin to touch the, the amazing, beautiful ease that is in your life now, that you, you have now. Your spirit is in you now. It is with you now. It is always with you. It is a part of you, even when you are in, in body, she says, with body, even though, <laughs> that's interesting, <laughs> I never heard anybody say that. <laughs> even though you are with body, your soul is very much alive and in a, a beautiful, uplifting, comfortable state of ease. And it's, it's sad that many of you, like myself, she says, will not realize that until after you are not with body any longer. So is that too late? So then is it too late for us at that time? Is it like too late for us to, she says, um, in the traditional structure of time, there isn't a time, so there's not really a lateness about it. That's an assumption that you arrive at a, like a destination or a point of connection, like a point. It's almost like she says, there's not a lateness. There isn't that, that doesn't exist, she says, for me, for afterlife. But your meaning, the answer to the meaning of what you're asking is yes. You have had your chance in that particular lens or that particular fold of your lifetime and it's over. It's, it's over with that body and in the presence of those relationships and those, those occupations and those, those uh, locations, the places you lived, the people you knew, the influence you had, it's over. It's over. Okay, that feels kind of like, wow, okay, it's like just phew, done. It's done. So, so with your advice to humans then, if we forgive ourselves quick, what does that give us or provide us in relation to this perspective about our soul being at ease and being with us and that we have access to that at all times? Does forgiveness relate to that or connect to that in some way? Yes, she said yes. Um, the, the, the piece of the resistance, the, the self-imposed blocks and barriers you have to your own happiness, she said, is human. It's a human, it's perfectly acceptable human construct. It's, it's something the mind puts in place and that, your, that the society and relationships that you have around you give you affirmations of and affirm for you. And so, of course, you believe it. It's not, it's not that you're being tricked or manipulated. It's just a common shared viewpoint. She says vantage point. And yet there really is no way to explain to you in, in words how 
miraculous it is that your spirit is with you now and what it could do for your body and for for your heart your emotions your relationships your your mind to allow your mind to soften and not be so on guard like attention on guard she says attention on guard all the time and she says life could be so much more full it could be fuller for you if you only knew just a small part of or portion of what your soul is ready to do for you with you because of you so that's the sunshine energy she brings in is the message about our soul and how it is on the ready to serve us that's amazing how do you recommend that we do that as people how do you how can we as human beings like do you have any inside scoop on that how can we connect with our spirits better how can we allow ourselves to soften to our own resistance within us I mean, it seems like mindset, it seems like the ego mind is really tough and we've been through a lot collectively in our lifetimes now and our hearts and our empathy, our empath channels are pretty much like burned out. <laughs> like, what do you, can you give us any tools or tips or insight? She says, oh, your positive attitude, she said, your attitude is directly connected to your well-being. So if you are well, if you are doing the things, the, the patterns, the routines, the rituals is kind of what I see, like the patterns. If you're doing the things, if you have a routine, she says, that is, is truly caring about yourself, that's the best place to start. That is the, 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 the essential part that, that is needed in order for you to flourish and, and to understand all that is available to you. Caring for yourself. So this is different than self-care. Yes, it's not, it's not like a rhetoric, you guys. She's not saying self-care, self-care. She's saying caring for yourself, like genuinely having a, a love for yourself that promotes a, a routine that gives you constant opportunity to, to, and it's almost like she's saying to uplift yourself. She, she doesn't say choose a better mood or change your attitude or energy. She doesn't say that. She says to uplift yourself. She uses words like uplift, positive, and I mean, she says gratitude, being grateful for yourself and for the life that you have right now. And that's not to say you settle into it. She says it's not about accepting it and being just okay with how things are. It's about, she says, um, having gratitude for, for the, it's, it, she says it's going to sound very cliche, but for the little things, for the fact that you have fingers and that you can see, even if you need glasses like I do. <laughs> she's like, even if you need glasses. And she's showing me like pain in her legs and later on in her life, I don't know if she was actually in a wheelchair. She looks old when she died. Um, I mean, no offense, beautiful woman, beautiful spirit. Um, but she looks older. She's rubbing her legs and she's saying, even this, even from this view, even all the things that happen to you, if you can wake up in the morning and look at the blue sky and have an appreciation for the fresh air or the colors of the sky or the shapes of the clouds or the sun, the feeling of the sun just warming, the golden sun warming your face, she says, that will get you leaps and bounds closer to what it is that you need, what it is that you want. It will let you grow with and toward your spirit. And that's what you want. That's what you really want. All right. Wow. Okay, Miss Doris Day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, my dear, for coming in. It was nice to meet you. I didn't, we didn't talk a whole lot about your actual life, but you've given us so much positive uplift. You guys, she is just a ray of sunshine, I'm telling you. And I know that you've been through a lot of things. I mean, I think. I do know, I think I know some things about, um, I think I've heard some things, I'm trying to recall. It's hard to recall when I'm kind of in the channeling state, so I apologize for that, but I feel as though your life wasn't all roses and cherries, but you have this incredible attitude and it's just this true authentic appreciation and kindness. And I just, I, I appreciate, connecting with you today so thank you so much for being here my dear thank you so much and I want to give her like a, a bouquet of yellow roses for solar plexus and spirit and the roses remind me of the heart chakra and of energy of nurturing mother 
Rose always reminds me of a mother or grandmother energy. Usually it's a pink rose, but for you, my dear, it's got to be yellow. Solar plexus, spirit, encouraging and uplifting our spirit today. Thank you, Doris Day, for being here. And thank you for being here on Above Life channel on YouTube. I hope you've enjoyed this channeling session. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new weekly channeling session. And check out my podcast on Sundays, Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. That's been running since 2020, my friends. So you can get some uplifting and real talk about intuitive and life topics from me. If you need a little bit of that uplifting boost, pick me up, positive attitude stuff and real talk about life, being a person, <laughs> go ahead and check it out. All right. Thank you so much for being here. I hope we've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope. Remember, the purpose is always to do that, to give you that inspiration and that, that, that little boost of hope that you, that you need and you deserve. It's your life after all. This is your life. So you got to live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.